and welcome to my blog. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Something about being a missionary mom. Turn maybe right. something about Costa Rica. No talent. Right. Anyways, we are um, in the car on our way to church. But this is the clip I'm going to use um, at the beginning of my video. So I just wanted to say welcome. And I hope you enjoy. This is sort of a look into our everyday life here in Costa Rica. And today is an extra busy day because it's church night. So. Crazy driving. So it's actually uh, 6.15 already. I'm a little bit behind schedule. I set my alarm so early because I like a few minutes to wake up. But usually I'm out of bed a little faster. But um, pulling out the school uniforms now. Jeremy is downstairs with the girls getting them dressed. And we'll get dressed and get out of here in no less than 30 minutes. Say good morning. morning. Good morning. Say good morning, guys. What are we eating? I'm tired today. Good morning, Ellie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> We're having some breakfast. I am packing up the girls' backpacks and Ellie's lunchbox. And an interesting thing we have here is that each girl has a notebook and it goes back and forth. And the teacher will send notes to me with like announcements and things we need to know. Like Ellie has some sort of presentation she has to do. And this is telling me all about it. So I'm going to pull that out before I send the notebook back. And then I can also write my own notes back to her with things I want to know. So even though we also have phones and we can use WhatsApp, it's a really nice way to communicate. Lila has a ton of notebooks. You can hear Jeremy in the background. <laughs> He's got some allergy problems right now. And so I use this color-coded chart to know what book she needs what day. So like today, she needs her Spanish book, her English book, her social studies book, her math book, and her science book. So I change these out because she's got at least four or five more notebooks and her backpack is already pretty heavy. So I switch it out each day to what she actually needs. And if she's going to be there like for a short day for some reason, then I don't send the day, the books for the hours that she's not there. So this is what I threw on to walk the girls down to school today. I got a basic t-shirt from Walmart and a hand-me-down uh, LuLaRoe, I don't remember what it's called, skirt. <laughs> my ugly but very comfortable sandals and my little crossbody purse. And I always have my hair up in a bun like this with a scrunchie. I know it's kind of ridiculous, but it's hot here. So actually, and this is actually a little bit nicer than what I would normally walk them to school in, but um, I am planning to go out shopping later. And I always carry this instead of my full purse because half the time I end up carrying Lila's backpack for her. So my purse is a backpack. So this is just my wallet with an attachable strap that I can take on and off and clip my keys to. So that's really handy. It is 6.42, 6.43 and we are headed out to school. We did pretty good getting out the door. That should get us there, get them there a little bit early even. We might stop and buy some toilet paper because Lila's class needs it and you know, <laughs> I don't want the poor child to be without toilet paper. Hi Lila. Yep, <laughs> we know who you are. Found at the corner and there's a, uh, one of those going up the street. I don't know if you can hear me, but one thing I love is the amazing view where we live. You look over the Valley of San Jose, um, it's hot. called the Central Valley. It's not hot. It's actually nice today. It's a nice breeze. It's just the sun on your back. Anyways, just a gorgeous view that I have every day that it's clear. Sometimes it's not clear and you can't see any of that. So we have a couple of pulperias really close to our house. And I stopped at this one because it usually has a ton of toilet paper and I'm probably going to get this one that will be a thousand sheets for like 75 cents. So I don't think I'll film up close to this school, but that is the girls' school straight ahead. Um, it's when you, you go in under those, there's two sets of awnings. And so it's, it's a busy drop off time. 7 a.m. is when. Awnings are the part that stick over the street. And so you don't have to be rained on? Like a roof? Yeah, like a roof. Yeah, so it's shady for you? But yeah, 7 a.m. is when most kids, um, the, first, the first round of students comes in. 
So I'm across the street from the school. That's where I just took the girls inside. I just like this was a little more respectful. I don't know if you can hear the kids screaming, but teachers and parents. I don't know exactly what time it is. I don't think it's quite seven yet, but there they are. And I'll be back. I'll be back to pick Ellie up at either ten or uh, both of them at noon. Ellie can go to English class from ten to noon, and <laughs> she really likes it. But we don't send her all the time. We send her most of the time though. I am back on my street, and it's hard to see, but way up there in the distance, right up there, that is the other side of the valley. So the valley that we live in, we're up in the mountains a good bit. We're up higher elevation than San Jose, but even still, like, the Central Valley is ginormous, and that is where the majority of Costa Rican population lives. Once you leave this valley, it gets... Um, a lot more rule a lot very quickly like pretty much everything now a lot of a lot of Costa Rica is a lot more developed than Nicaragua but a lot of the commerce and a lot of the population is right here but what I think is amazing is this is just a normal like you know neighborhood suburb if you want to call it and at the end of the street down here we have all the animals <laughs> if you've seen anything on my Facebook before I've shown them but we've got chickens and there's a pair of geese, there's about four ducks, and um, I guess that's it, but still, it just seems crazy to me, and there's tons of chickens, and they're always having babies, and it gets really, I've gotten used to it for the most part, the crowing, but like one time I couldn't sleep, and he was definitely crowing like every, every about 10 seconds from like 3 a.m. till it's time to wake up, and it was kind of annoying, but anyways, so they just live like down at this end of the road and up in the park and they kind of go up the street sometimes. Sometimes they, I've seen them like nest up in here in, in our neighbor's yard. So yeah, it's a trip being in a city and having all these farm animals. I always have to lock this door back because Elijah, if he gets out, he already knows. He just has to pull on this and it will open. So. We just have to keep that door locked to keep him safe. So, it's kind of gross, but we have, we don't have a lot of bugs here where we live. We're kind of fortunate because we live in the city and most people fumigate. So I don't think the bugs are, are really much worse than Florida, probably on par, but we do have a bit of an ant problem that has developed in our kitchen. That is one thing that we do struggle with a lot. And so Jeremy went on a rampage and all these guys are dead and maybe that's the end of it. He said they were coming in from up there, which if you see this part of my kitchen, it's just got the the plastic sheeting over it. Anyways, it doesn't have like the normal roof like the rest of the house. So I guess they would have more easy access here, obviously anyways. So I'm gonna get that cleaned up now. So I have finished all my chores for the moment. And Elijah and I are hanging out down here at my sewing table, and he is on his new toy that he got for his birthday. He loves this thing, and he's going to have it for a long time. It's, uh, I let him play with it inside for now. We haven't actually taken it out on the street, so it's an inside toy for a little bit. But anyway. Alright, so I have finished up my side seams, and now I have... I have pinned my neck band and I'm moving on to that. That used to be something that scared me. I never thought that was something I could do, but neck bands are actually not that hard. And then all that will be left will be to hem the sleeves and this top will be done. So the neck band is done and that came out pretty good. I think one of the things I want to learn to do next is how to cover this. There's a way to make like a contrast band. It's just, it's not in my wheelhouse right now. But I would love to find a way to cover it. Just, it's just in the back so that when you see, when you see it, it covers from like right here to like right here. And so maybe I will want to do that soon. So I'm actually making really good time this morning, catching up on a lot of my sewing projects. So before I change my thread again, I am going to move on to this dress that I cut out, which is the same fabric as um, the shirt I was working on. And it's going to be like a very simple uh, tank dress, like no sleeves, high neck, just a straight dress. And it's going to be like another one I made recently for layering because it gets really hot here. 
and sleeveless is the best way to layer. You ready to give me another one? Yeah. Put it in my hand. I have help. All right, so I have my armbands and my neck band completed on my dress, and I am finally ready to switch over to some pink thread so I can hem it, and then I can hem the sleeves on my shirt, and then they will both be done. It is 11.30, and I am all done sewing for the day. I was able to finish up the side seams, put in the neck band, and hem the sleeves of this Autumn Spice Tea from Alien Mac. And then this is kind of my own creation from their patterns. It is a mashup of the hipster dress and the Monday morning dress. I use the hipster for like the bottom half and then the Monday morning for pretty much everything from there up for the sleeves and the neck um, because I wanted a, a sleeveless dress. And then I also finished up Lila's um, bee posh headband, bow headband to go with her birthday dress. I just had to do the, the actual bow part. I'd already sewn the, um, the headband and the little, the little section around the middle. And then I also worked on something else I did not film because it is, because it is a surprise. So I won't be putting that one on camera. So it's about 4.15 and we're about to run out the door and head out to church. But I wanted to show you my outfit. This is the dress that I made earlier. And I love how it came out. It was exactly what I wanted pretty much. So I just, it's been hot. So I threw on this um, really cute racer back uh, vest thing that I've had for a very long time. Jeremy bought it for me a long time ago. And actually this necklace is pretty old too. Only the shoes, and of course the dress, are new. But um, anyways, I'm super happy with how it turned out. So we are meters on our way to church. Right. And the GPS says an hour and it said an hour and 15 minutes just a minute ago, obviously. So that's how long it takes us. And this is before our dinner stops, so that might get even longer. We will see. Taco Bell for dinner. You guys like Taco Bell? Yeah. Yeah? We have this whole room to ourselves, so of course, if the kids want to sit over there, sit over there. It is 8.35 and we are finally on our way home. About to pay another toll. Our second toll. Is there three before we get home? I'm going this way, I believe there is. Yeah, not. We don't always have to go this way, but sometimes the GPA takes us, GPS takes us this way because it's faster. But all in all, it's still like maybe two and a half dollars in tolls total. I mean, it adds up over time, but it's not ridiculous.